Against a deadly threat, you have to fight with everything you have to survive. Hi everyone, this is John with today's active self-protection lesson out of Tucson, Arizona. It is a domestic violence situation that's not particularly graphic, but because of the sensitive nature, I do think that viewer discretion is advised on this one. It does teach us important lessons about the grave consequences that domestic violence can bring. It also teaches us about the importance of empty-handed skills and reminds us again of the importance of spiritual fitness. The news story said these two people have a romantic relationship, a domestic dispute, and he grabs a hold of her there, grabbed her around the neck, then throws her over this wall. And you're gonna see her fighting for that here. The, the camera itself is kinda, you know, gummed up just a little bit there. And you're gonna see him now. He's got a knife in his right hand and he is going to use that knife repeatedly on this woman who was his girlfriend. And again, this one was sent to me by the owner of the building, uh, which took this footage and he gets her one more time and then he runs off. Now, this one's not quite over yet. I've sped it up significantly for time, but she recovers, grabs her jacket and heads to the road. So you can see some significant time has passed. You can see how fast time is passing and she passes out there. Now look at the top right. And what you're gonna see here in just a moment is a bystander actually sees her there, gets his phone out and calls the police department. They do get there, they try their best, but unfortunately the victim here did not make it. I've got to think about some lessons on this one. And one of the ones I want to talk about is in a lot of women's self-defense classes, they tell you to stomp on somebody's you know, heel or stomp on their, the instep of their foot. And you can see here that once he's got his arms around her, he picks her up to move her. And once you're up, you got to know how to defend yourself from those places. And most women's self-defense classes, frankly, don't teach that to women. That's a marker of not a good class. And you can actually see here that he has his arm around her neck. That kind of one arm choke probably won't put her out if she knows what she's doing at all, but she is struggling for her life. So knowing how to fight with the person that you are with, and even if they have you up, body control and knowing how to defend yourself, very important in women's self-defense as well as men's. Now he puts her over the top here, and of course this is a very bad spot to be in, but one of the things that we talk about if you're gonna defend yourself against the knife is you gotta control that knife hand, and you gotta control the arm with the knife in it. Nothing else really matters at this point. That was her number one priority, and I don't blame her at all for not having those skills, but this is why in empty-handed skills, if you're gonna fight against somebody who has a short range tool like a knife, you learn that that is your first priority. Control the hand and the arm with the knife because when you don't, nothing else matters quite literally. When he gets done, when he decides to get done, and you can see right there in his right hand the significant size of blade that he had. At that point, she needs to get up if she possibly can and get away, as incredibly difficult as that is. It takes great emotional fitness to do. She does try to get up there. He's able to get over and give her one more stab. Now, we do want to sit here and think very quickly about spiritual fitness because you don't know when the last day of your life is. I'm sure she wasn't planning on this being the last day of your life. So make sure you've told your loved ones that you love them, that you've left nothing unsaid, that you and Jesus have a strong relationship because you'll need it in that moment. And then finally, when this bystander comes along, this is a great reason to have your individual first aid kit with you, to have your first aid skills strong so that you can not just call the police, but render aid in that moment that might have made a difference. I don't know if he could have saved her with that many wounds, but it certainly wouldn't have hurt. And that's why some hemostatic agent and some chest seals and you know uh, the, the gauze that you would have on you are incredibly important so that you can do the best job you can to try to get her to help. And, and those kind of medical skills are incredibly important as well. So let's learn the lessons out of this one as sad as they are as we seek to cover our ASP.